Hello and welcome to another VR review with me, Mike, from Virtual Reality Oasis and my Frisian friend, Nathie. How you doing, dude? How you doing on this fine Thursday morning, mate? I am doing fine. Do I do I still look alive, by the way? I, uh, I don't know. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay in a way, but... I, I haven't had that much sleep lately, I think. <laughs> You've been playing Torn as well, like, too much. Yes. And obviously recovering still from Gamescom. You know, we know that that was oh, a crazy event. We both had a totally, lot of fun there. <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> but we're gathering together again today to do another one of these sort of virtual reality reviews together. You guys and girls seem to really sort of dig this format where we discuss and review the latest VR games. We'd love to know your feedback in the comments if you've got any questions for us, any feedback for us. And also, if you'd like to let us know which game you'd like us to review next, that would be really cool as well. Uh, yes, but today... Please. We're getting together to uh, talk about, of course, Torn. And uh, although we're going to be talking about the game in detail, we'll try and avoid as many spoilers as possible. So you can still go ahead and enjoy the game after watching this review. So don't you worry about that. So let's start off with the very basics uh, and tell you about the sort of details about this game. Uh, first up, this game was released on the 28th of August 2018 and is available on Oculus, Steam and PSVR. Now, Torn is a dark science fiction mystery puzzle game. You take the role of a sort of video blogger who is Catherine Patterson, who discovers the abandoned mansion of a missing Dr. Lawrence Talbot. Now, apparently he's been missing for 64 years, so the mystery is, like, where has he gone? Well, 64 years, Marty! <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to, to, to enter the mansion and explore and use the gravity tool, which is a, a mysterious tool that you pick up on your way, uh, to sort of uh, activate his machines that he's left laying around the mansion and to transport to the strange dimension known as the parallel mm. to uncover the mystery of his disappearance. Now the game is teeming with puzzles and creations of a mad sort of disembodied physicist and Talbot's mansion is a sandbox VR tourist destination built for fans of classic science fiction like the Twilight Zone and Black Mirror. Ooh, so That sounds classy, I like that. Yeah, yeah, and that, that that is what had me really interested in this game because I I really love puzzle games in virtual reality. I think it's a great medium for puzzle games. Uh, but also, I really love Black Mirror. It's one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Uh, so the combination of the two of them really got me hyped about this one. So I don't know if you... Do you enjoy puzzle games in VR, dude? Yeah, especially the escape ones are, uh, are okay. amazing. You know, where yeah. you're stuck for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for that key to get out of like, yeah, some handcuffs like, or something to escape. Help me, please, please. Uh, yeah. it's, just, it's just fun, you know, like training your brain is, is one of the best ways to like, you know, play games. Yeah, absolutely. So you're getting something out of it as well. You feel like you're you're achieving something. It's, sat it's satisfying to, to find the solution and to open that, that door. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. And what about Black Mirror? Have you have you watched any episodes of Black oh, Mirror yeah. before? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I love I love that TV show, and, and I'd urge any of the viewers out there that haven't seen Black Mirror to go and check it out. It's on Netflix. Uh, it's a super weird uh, sort of sci-fi <laughs> dystopian future vision of how technology turns against us. It's just it's just genius. I, I can remember that you uh, recommended me watching it, and you said like just watch it. So I started with the first one. Oh God, no! And uh, you know I'm not gonna go into details, but. Let's say if I can recommend people watching it now, then don't go for the first one. Yeah, that's no, what you forgot to tell me. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't know if I want to see more of this. Then I watched the second <laughs> one. I was like, okay, yeah, this is legit. But yeah. the first one makes you wonder what the existence is of life. Yeah, and, and you'll you question me, you know, in future, you'll be like, that dude likes some messed up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike's like, wow, this is the best series ever. He is, he's he's a, a strange, strange yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to uh, Torn. If you're interested in picking up this game, it's uh, 23 British pounds, uh, 29.99 in US dollars, and they also have a 15% discount on launch up until oh. the 4th of September. So if you want to pick oh. it up, now is a good time to do it. So hopefully by nice. the end of this video, we'd have kind of made up your mind either way and given you the information to make an informative choice yourself whether you think it's worth your time and money. Um, so let's talk about the game's development because it's kind of an unusual one in that uh, it's developed by a company called Aspire Studio. They're based in uh, Austin, Texas. Now, this is the first game that they've actually developed themselves in-house. Uh, previously, they've been responsible for publishing games such as uh, Observer, which was a 
cyberpunk style game featuring Rutger Hauer. I don't know if you remember that one. It was like a PC game. And they also port over games from PC to Mac. So they ported over Borderlands oh. 2, Call of Duty, Civilization, and ah. your favorite, Bioshock, 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 yes. Bioshock Infinite, of course. Um, and it seems like this relationship with Bioshock uh, paid off as they actually had the writer from the original Bioshock game and Tomb Raider, uh, Susan O'Connor, on board to do the writing for this game alongside Neil Glancy. So that's kind of where some of the Bioshock vibes mm-hmm. kind of trickle over into this one. Did you kind of get the I Bioshock like- vibes in this one? Yeah, mm. especially the fact that there is an elevator in this game. Mm. Mm, yes, and, and I'm going to be talking more about that elevator uh, later on uh, in in the graphics because let's let's move on to the graphics then because um, I played this game on uh, Vive Pro. What headset did you use to play this one? I uh, played it on the, the the vanilla Vive. Vanilla Vive. Okay, the original and best. <laughs> <laughs> flavor uh, okay so like playing it on the Vive Pro and I'm sure you probably experienced the same experience using the original Vive was that the game looks great like it's a really nice looking game right yeah I like agree, when, yeah. When, you, when you start off the game and you're walking up to the mansion and you've oh. kind of got the, the woods around you mm. it really looks beautiful it's like a pleasure for the eyes <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like like a painting in, in mm. a way it's it's yeah like the start is something I, I would play again yeah Really, really nice. Really nice start to the game. And, you know, when you do get into the the mansion itself, full of detail, loads of stuff going on in these environments. You know, you can do some really cool stuff as well, like some some material physics in the game work really well. Like there's some curtains and there's cobwebs, which you can brush aside and move and manipulate, which is kind of cool. And then glass and reflections are handed really well in the game as well. And like you mentioned about the lifts, like I remember there was a part where I got into the lift and I looked up and the ceiling of the lift was actually made of glass so you could see through it and it was a really nice effect it kind of felt like you was in that lift from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory you know Uh, like kind of magical lift it it reminded me a bit of 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 the elevator that you could also see in in the in the Titanic movie Mm. they they used you know when you were looking up you're like oh wow I'm like in a in a fancy fancy lift yeah but just, just the, just the, the, the start of the game where you see the mansion and it's so spooky and, oh man, like I was getting so curious and the graphics were very nice, but for me the, the soundtracks were really sucking me into the story with this mm. one. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm getting so like, like curious. I, I just knew my curiosity would lead to trouble in the end. Yeah. So by following all those haunting like sounds and. And, and, and music, I kind of got into that mansion, you know? Yeah. So it felt like such a smooth, like, introduction to yeah. a title that was very surprising in the end. Yeah, and I think, you know, you've hit the nail on the head there a little bit in that, you know, the first hour of the game, the lead up to, like, the actual main sort of meat and bones of the game is probably one of the game's strongest points you know the beginning the intrigue around the story the mystery the the early part of the game is definitely the most interesting it kind of peters off in the middle then kind of leads up to a crescendo at the end uh we won't spoil anything but that's uh, kind of how it sort of plays out mm-hmm. um but in the mansion itself you know the, it, like i said it's full of detail you've kind of got all these steampunk machines that have kind of been left abandoned by dr talbot and he's got yeah. like these huge cables just like going through random doorways and stuff you can really tell that he was like this kind of eccentric type that just <laughs> really was passionate about his projects and really didn't care about the mansion he was just like yeah i'm just gonna put this like huge cable mad, through this doorway mad scientist <laughs> definitely mad scientist definitely mad scientist but the graphics and the art style do a great job of creating an interesting world that it you know it is 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 wanting you to go and explore yeah. it and and you feel like that intrigue about exploring the mansion itself do, as well do it so. like the, the way the 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 uh, lights from the outside are like shining into the mansion mm. has been done so well it's- yeah no you're right and, and it's funny because like after watching the nvidia geforce rtx on rtx off thing you know <laughs> now, now you can kind of see like when people are, like studios are faking it and they did a pretty good job of faking like the outside light and the outside sort of environment coming in through the glass windows of some of the rooms but really like a game like this would have been really cool with the rtx technology available to them they could have really made some interesting stuff with that so yeah uh, it's a shame they didn't have access to that technology at the time of the development but yeah what i what i think is is so so cool about iron is that the the visuals the graphics are as important as the as the sounds and the music they Mm. they found a a nice balance between those you Mm. know 
Absolutely, so. absolutely. And it does stack up to be one of the better looking games available in VR right now. So they did a really decent job there. Yeah. So let's move about onto a more sort of spicy topic, and that is the <laughs> controls. Because uh, locomo- locomotion options always get people triggered, you know, and, and this is the problem I think with locomotion in general is that it's very difficult to satisfy everyone. Uh, but they have put three different control options in this game. You've got smooth locomotion uh, where you can sort of push on the, I was playing on the Vive, so I was pushing on the left uh, touchpad uh, to move forward and then you look with your head in the direction you want to go. Now. This kind of triggers some people because they want to have a decoupled head and movement system where they can move forward and then just look around with their head. But that is kind of intense for newcomers, so I can understand why Aspire went down this route. But But the option is there to do it. So if you want to turn it off, you can. And then you can just do it your way. Yeah. Yeah. But I think think the thing is, like, you know, I don't know if you found this, but the movement was very slow uh, with, uh, you know, the smooth locomotion. Very slow. Very slow. Usually you have like, uh, like two, three options to speed up. Mm -hmm. But in this one, it's just one pace. And that's all. And at the start, it feels good to be like walking that way. It totally suits the style of the game. Mm -hmm. But then later you're like, you know, it's a, it's a, puzzle solving game so you want to go fast from one yeah. place to another but then you can't so after a while i went from uh walking locomotion to to dashing because yes. i i was done with with the whole like uh slow poke uh, movement so yeah, yeah. I, like I, i'm not sure like there there are three options right of, mm-hmm. of what you can go for you have walking locomotion dash and teleportation i Absolutely. didn't try teleportation i'm not sure about you but uh <laughs> No, I did. I did the same thing that you did. I went with smooth locomotion at first, which I think uh, you're right. You know, it matches the sort of vibe of the beginning of the game. But later on, where you have to do a bit of backtracking between uh, different parts of the mansion, I just wanted to get there quickly, so I mm-hmm. switched over to dash as well. I didn't mm-hmm. try the teleport because I don't necessarily like teleport. I think the dash did do a good job of moving around quickly. Um, but the thing with with the smooth locomotion is you actually pull the trigger to go a little bit faster. So if you push in the direction you want to go, you go slow. Then you go a little bit faster if you pull the left trigger. I would have liked it if you pull the right trigger as well at the same time that you just run, you know? So you could mm. ha- have both triggers pulled down and you run in that direction. That would have made things way nicer in terms of the smooth locomotion. But I think... Um, you know, the main criticism from a lot of people is they want more options. And I think as VR developers, they could just take this feedback on board that the more options you can give the player for different methods of locomotion and different styles of locomotion, the better, because then you're going to cater for everyone's needs and they can customize the locomotion options to what they want. So Mm -hmm. some people were complaining that, you know, they didn't, they had snap rotation instead of smooth rotation. Um, Also, Oculus Rift users were complaining that the developers had used the trigger for grabbing items in game instead of the grip, which is kind of a bit disappointing like i never played the game on oculus but yeah it's just like that's what the grip was there for you know to to have that kind of nice sense of grip um also people reported on rift that they didn't enable strafing whereas i do remember they enabled strafing on the vive so kind of interesting they may have removed that from the oculus version um but yeah like so like i said you know uh, these kind of methods of locomotion the more you can add i think is is the better you know and mm. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm already happy that they went for smooth locomotion to teleportation to dash there are so many games where you play them you're like okay we need to send an email to the developer again telling them to add more options because it's important for the vr community blah 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 yeah. let's say it saves you a lot of hassle to do that upfront or even when you are having the the concept ready for your game to keep in mind that you want to have smooth locomotion Hmm. because there are also games because this one it felt like it felt like this game was not built from the ground up Hmm. for smooth locomotion yeah yeah locomotion it was one of those let's say apex construct titles where you get stuck a lot where you want to walk, mm. but at some parts you can't because there are like dead spots. Felt like they added this later. I'm mm. not sure about you, but that's how you were like moving around where it didn't feel like a, a smooth loco friendly title. But Yeah, there was definitely parts of the game where I got stuck. 
through smooth locomotion and that would be because there was like an object in my way like you wouldn't just walk through it you'd have to physically move it which does make sense um but yeah sometimes it didn't quite make sense um but most of the game like i played the first half of the game smooth and then let the second half dash um and i kind of i thought both worked fine for me i but i can understand some people's complaints if they're used to a certain locomotion method uh but you know these kind of things can be easily updated by the developers sure. I, don't, yeah. I don't necessarily think it's uh, no. a difficult for them to update some smooth rotation to please <laughs> everyone say it's not game breaking at no, all it's ex- not exactly something that can't be solved no you're right exactly yeah. so they have got a few options there but i understand from the criticism and the feedback from the community is that not everyone was happy with it but then again people people from the community very rarely are happy put it that way there's always something to complain about but you know you understand um so let's move on to the sound because you you touched on the sound a little bit and i think you're right there in that you know the sound and the music score does a really great job of kind of immersing you even more into this beautiful environment that you can see with your eyes um and i thought the voice acting from the female character because you do play a female character called Catherine Patterson um, and the Dr. Talbot uh, sort of uh, voice lines were delivered very well I thought it was a pretty decent job in terms of the voice acting it, it did get a bit wordy at times I felt like uh, I don't know if you kind of experienced this but certainly in, in the down parts of the game where it's more about the story and you get transported to the parallel and you're having conversations with Dr. Talbot sometimes it did get a bit wordy and you were just yeah. merely a, a bystander watching the story mm-hmm. unfold Um no i agree like usually there are like uh moments in a game where they really want to you know tell you everything you need to know but then there is an option for you to just fiddle around or interact with things around you and in this case the the only option was to listen to what this uh uh, math scientist uh had to say (laughs) yeah but there is nothing uh going on around that where you are just like okay just give me something to juggle with or let me do something at least you know but uh yeah absolutely and i think that they were the kind of the the game's sort of down parts but in a way it did serve as a good way to break up the gameplay and add a little bit of pacing to the game so Mm -hmm. you know it's kind of swings and roundabouts on that but uh in, in in on the subject of the sound the soundtrack was actually produced by gary shyman who has also created the score for the original Bioshock game. So again, if you were kind of getting those Bioshock vibes, that's probably why. Um, but interestingly, you had an issue with uh, copyright claims on the music score. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So I uh, I played like the first two hours of the game and mm-hmm. then I decided to upload that to my channel. And then I got like six copyright uh, claims from YouTube saying that I didn't own the music. And that's right, I do not own the music of a video game. But usually uh, this is like uh, fair use, right? Because I'm doing a review, I promote the game. So I have, let's say, the rights uh, to, you know, publish it on my channel and also monetize it because Mm -hmm. that was the the main issue. You know, we do this full time Mm -hmm. and usually we put ads on the videos to, well, do this full time, right? Yeah, Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. But in this case, I couldn't do that. And it's not really a problem. I mean, it's like once in a lifetime that this happens. But that usually means that they don't have a license or they, they do, but they didn't like... Uh, uh, Buy exclusivity for their game or something like that? Yeah, like you have a Beat Saber too, you know, and, and mm-hmm. Electronauts. There are some tracks that if you play them on YouTube, you will yeah. be in trouble. And yeah. I mean, this this is a uh, like a guy who is very famous for his music. So I, I do get it. But let's say for YouTubers who want to play it like us, that was kind of like an issue but yeah uh, I think like yeah it's like one of those things that kind of affects us doesn't affect the general player base no. but you know it's one of those things I thought I would highlight because it kind of is important for us and especially if like developers are watching this it's something to take note of uh, in the future like if you want content creators to play your game then just ensure that you've got you know uh, you know no copyright claims when these things get uploaded to YouTube like you say Beat Saber had the same problem uh, when that was first released but that was quickly resolved mm-hmm. um so let's move down to the gameplay itself, like the core gameplay elements of this game. And I think it can, can be broken down into uh, exploring the mansion, um, solving puzzles, and collecting memories. So the simple sort of, to break down the gameplay in its simplest terms is it just revolves around the use of a gravity tool, right? 
which is like uh, it serves as a torch it serves as a key to open locked doors uh, a, a, like a, a lever handle to pull levers and it's like a physics based wand which you can use to pick up objects that are distant far away from you and they levitate and you can pull them and uh, closer to you and further away and you basically use that to solve puzzles now the puzzles themselves are pretty simple. Essentially, you have to complete circuits which are hidden within rooms, right? Uh, you uncover them by shining the torch on the floor or the walls or the ceiling, and you can see the traces of the circuits, and there's parts of them that are broken, and you have to sort of add, pick up items from the room and slot those into place to kind of you know, bridge the circuit and complete the circuit, and then that solves the puzzle, and then you move on to the next one. And each room has three of those puzzles you have to complete, and then that room is completed. But then on top of that, you have to look around the room with your torch. And then if you see an item wiggle or move a little bit, then you have to pick it up and then that creates a memory. And then that gets added to the barometer, which is like a kind of machine in each room that collects the memories uh, that you earn from solving the puzzle. So it's kind of a bit mind blowing. Uh, hopefully <laughs> I explained like crazy Frankenstein uh, doctor. I, I know. Hopefully I explained <laughs> it in a nice way, but I'm sure, you know, we're going to overlay the video of like the gameplay. So Dunk, maybe like me, me, me talking and you seeing the gameplay, you'll kind of get a greater understanding of what this game is actually about. You do, you do kind of look like a, like a mad scientist, like a mad scientist. Especially yeah, when you then t talk about this kind of stuff. It yeah, uh, makes makes total sense. I feel like one sometimes. <laughs> I feel like one sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, like I said, like you have to search for memories um, in the room, and this is something that I didn't realize till later on in the game. Actually, it was probably like later on in the first act of the game that I actually realized that collecting these memories that are hidden within rooms is so important. Um, and it's kind of a bit like Luigi's Mansion, you know, you're sort of shining your torch around, something's exactly. kind of moving, a little bit supernatural, yeah, yeah. you have to pick it up, and that's how you you you, you earn the, the memory from that. Mm -hmm. Also and cool then, is that you have this this uh, uh, gravity tool and you can shine at, at, at stuff, but you can also use it to point at objects. And then this, this Dr. Talbot is like giving you a tour of yeah. his mansion. So he's also telling yeah. you stories about the the objects you encounter and I, I really like that yeah and that was really smart actually and it's a really good point you made because I remember there was a part where I was I was looking at like a, a box of tea and he was like oh yeah this is really nice tea yeah. <laughs> and I was like oh, this, is, this is like a nice little touch you know and like you said because there's so much stuff you can interact with in the world it's interesting out and every now and again that he'll give you a bit of background story about mm -hmm. the item that you're looking at it's kind of cool another hidden feature this this gravity tool has is you can use it to like uh, get tips for your puzzles, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know where you want to go, if you don't know how to solve a certain like mystery, you can just activate like lights within this gravity tool. They they shoot out, and then Doctor Talbot is like helping you. Yeah. To like, he's just pointing you into the right direction. Yeah, so if you get really stuck and you can't find an item, because basically it just boils down to finding the right item to fit in the right slot. Like that, that is as basic as the puzzle gets, and there isn't really much variety in terms of the puzzles later on. Some of the puzzle gets gets smaller and more complicated, but it is just find the right item to fit in the right slot to complete the puzzle. Um, but yeah, you're right. If you if you get stuck, then you can squeeze on the Vive. It was like you squeeze the, the grip buttons on the side and then he'll, he'll help you out. Like you'll either find the piece that you're missing or sort of point you in the right direction of where you need to go. Um, so let's talk about bugs because you had some bugs. I had some bugs. Let's talk about the bugs. <laughs> Bugs, you mean? Yeah. I, I like I, I had a throwback to uh, Gunhart for a second there. <laughs> <laughs> bugs everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, like falling. It wasn't as that. It wasn't that bad. We weren't. We weren't falling through the floor no. or anything like that. Which apparently we were you doing by try, purpose. Right? You did try yeah. to fall through the floor. Because yeah, because of course you that's what we do in videos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so yeah, tell, tell me about the bugs that you encountered in this game. Yeah, so I encountered two bugs and. They weren't major ones. Well, maybe one of them was. So let me just start with the small one. So I had a few times where I logged back into the game and I couldn't open the menu. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I could open it, yes, but I couldn't open the settings in there. So for some reason, I couldn't change anything because I, I wanted to go from walking loco to uh, teleportation, for example, or dash, but I couldn't do that. And it was the same with the, with the uh, other settings in there, it completely froze. So I just had to continue playing the game with the settings I saved up from the start. 
And then the other one was one where I entered like that that other dimension. Mm -hmm. And when I wanted to go back, I was stuck in that like uh, very bright transition. Right. And nothing happened anymore. I could just hear the sea, mm -hmm. but there was nothing I could do. So I had to reboot uh, the game. But I do need to tell everyone out here uh, that when I do a review, like I boot this game like six times because I'm recording and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to take a break and like recording again. So yeah. usually because of my review, I launched the game like six, seven times. And I had a lot of games where they just crash after a while because they can't handle my like crazy, like, okay, you're now closed. Now you're opening again. Now you're closed, yeah. you know? So mm -hmm. those were the two bugs I encountered. Not, not that big. The last one was kind of, you know, bad because you need to get out of the game and like uh, yeah. relaunch it. And that breaks the immersion a bit. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was was solid, yeah. So with with that crash, did you have to um, go back? Did it sort of save your point after the transition, or did you re have to replay the whole conversation with Talbot in the parallel again? I don't think so. No, it was like okay. auto saving at at the right moment. But okay, but there are like like occasions where if you crash, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> yeah. You need to like re-listen to everything because the 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 save points are based on uh, I think like location and yeah. what puzzle you solved so far. So let's say if you're in the middle of a, a puzzle and mm -hmm. then your game crashes, I think you need to do the whole thing again. Yeah, although like you, you mentioned, the game does do a good job of auto-saving throughout the gameplay. And although I did encounter a crash, it didn't cause me any real uh, backtracking or having to do stuff again. So I was quite fortunate in that. But yeah, I, I encountered one full game crash during the playthrough uh, where the game just uh, stopped or to, like completely and it just did like quit me out to um, steam home and then the second bug which was kind of unusual swapped my hands over so I, I had like the, you, you'll know that the gravity tool is in your right hand mm. but then it just switched over to my left and obviously if I swapped them around with the Vive controllers my hand would be like this upside down so uh, for about what? an hour of the yeah for an hour of the game I actually played it with like uh, the, the, the Vive controllers <laughs> swapped over and a hand that was upside down um, but then it, like when I changed the locomotion settings to dash, it just reverted back. So it was in maybe something to do with the locomotion settings that what? changed it. But it was a, a really unusual bug. Like I n never really had that before, but I thought it was worth mentioning. But you can like switch your gravity tool to the left or the right hand and also holster it. So mm. that might have been like confused uh, in, in yeah. that sense. But I, I have no idea how I did that, but it was kind of confusing. For nice one, Mike. You broke yeah. the game. <laughs> nice Good one. Job. Yeah. Um, but overall, it didn't affect the, the overall experience. And let's sort of like then move on to our conclusion of the game because... Overall, the game took me about five hours, just over five hours to complete. And I thought it was a de decent length for a puzzle game because a lot of the puzzle games we've previously tried in VR have been relatively short, maybe about an hour long, two hours long. Um, although I did find that the second act of this game was a little bit tedious leading up to the finale. You know, it got a bit too wordy involved in the story and like I've said before you were kind of a, a passive bystander in the story mm. and that was kind of a bit uh, slow but you know the finale ultimately did pay off for me because like I said I'm a fan of Black Mirror and if you're a fan of Black Mirror you'll be satisfied um, and overall I would say that I do recommend the game because you know I like puzzle games and you know if you like puzzle games and you like exploration then I would say you'll enjoy this one but just note that the puzzles are very simple it's just like kind of get the right part of the puzzle to fit in the right place um, but it was the story that really pulled me through the whole gameplay and unlike other puzzle games that I've played it really did emphasize on a really strong story and that was really great about this one you know the narration and the story was really what kind of pulled me through the whole adventure yeah. um, so I don't know if you kind of uh, have the same kind of feeling about it with the, from your sort of playtime with the game yeah, the storytelling was uh, was fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. uh, it shows once again how important a good story is, and that it can carry the game, even if the let's say um, puzzles are easy, or if the you know the the overall gameplay is, is getting repetitive, or you can't really do much. You know, that that's something that um, that more developers should do. You mm -hmm. know, um, mm -hmm. and not just just a basic story. Of course, this this uh, story that has been written was like they, they spent some some hours on that i'm sure it's not For like sure. hey here's a story bam okay let's do it yeah. um but that means that you know sometimes it's way more important to think about a good story first 
write the script as well and then start building your game it, it's almost like i want to make a movie and i make the movie without the script hmm. and that's how most vr games are getting made at this moment well i'm like you know if you are a developer make the script then write everything down so you kind of get the idea what scenes you want to make what gameplay mechanics you want to attach to the story and then you start building it i think that's the right order mm. and i think it, it has think, the most effect yeah i think you're right in that a lot of vr games right now rely on sort of uh, an interesting mechanic or a gimmick to make it interesting as a game whereas like you say it should really be the story and the narrative that really wants you to engage with the game and, and explore it to its completion you know mm -hmm. um but i think it's a great first game from aspire you know especially because they developed it in-house and it's the first game they've developed in-house so i think it's a really great start for them as a studio and uh, i really look forward to seeing more from them in the future if i had to give it a score i would probably say i'd give it a seven out of ten i don't know if you feel the same way or yeah i mean puzzle wise it wasn't the best thing ever but just the uh... Like the the environments, the the like the feel to it, the, the story, like for me that's like like art on mm -hmm. a level we haven't seen before. So for me it would be like going to an eight. Mm -hmm. um, it's like like somewhere in the middle, like seven eight. Uh, and that's not because I'm a Bioshock fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, yeah. I did feel that that Bioshock vibe as well, yeah. and I. I do see the future of of, of like good storytelling uh, uh, VR games. So let's let's hope they will uh, continue doing this. And mm. it's also a great honor to have a development studio like Aspire to uh, do a VR game as their mm. first title. Mm. You know, that's 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 yeah. like you need to have some guts for that. Yeah, because absolutely. They could have also gone for a pancake uh, title after so much like experience you know mm. they point at so many big triple a's and mm. then they they jump into a niche market so so what you're saying is you want aspire to uh create you a bioshock game in vr that's that's what you're saying <laughs> yeah the one that they announced at e3 that never came out you know the the, the big daddy like simulator i think oh please. right yes yeah. okay there you go aspire you got some 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 inspiration for a future game there um but there, there you have it guys and girls i hope you have enjoyed this uh sort of vr game review uh let us know what you think of torn in the comments down below have you had a chance to check it out are you interested in checking this one out i would love to know your thoughts also let us know if you want us to continue doing these reviews and let us know what games you'd like us to review maybe you'd want us to review some psvr games for example we'd also be interested in doing that if you guys and girls want that kind of content so uh, there we have it. That is Torn. So, uh, anything you want to say, Nathy? As long as you guys don't uh, tell us to review Jumanji or the Halo <laughs> uh, title, uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. Okay, you can just post whatever you want. There you go. We got you got two caveats. <laughs> we're not going to review those games, but anything else, no. we're we're open to suggestions. <laughs> yes. Cool. Well, I hope you guys and girls have enjoyed this one. So, uh, until next time, we'll see you then. So, bye bye for now. Take care. See you later. Bye. bye. Yeah.